Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Dynamic Effort Lower Day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click a like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Over to the training. Um, I upped the bands a little, reduced the weight a little on the speed squats. It was a lot smoother. Felt like I got better bar speed. Uh, I overshot though. I lost count. I was going to do 12 doubles. I did 13 doubles. You guys will see if you count them. Overshot it a bit, but they felt good. Everything felt smooth, smelt, felt controlled, uh, had my rocking minimized. And people need to remember when we're, we're box squatting for speed, you're going to see a little bit of rocking. It's almost unavoidable. Try to cut that out when, when I do maxes, though. Uh, again, it's just because we're just trying to go so fast. You're going to see a little bit, even when you're trying to stay tight. So, uh, and I always, I get more of it with bands than I do with chains. And, and next wave, I will do chains, by the way. This is the end of a wave. And you, we can compare the difference to see if I'm right. But I, I think that I rock less when I use chains for some reason on speed work. But again, this is off of a 12 inch box. You can notice right there, if you look close when I'm hitting that bottom, you can see that left leg. I am way below parallel with this stance because this is not a wide stance. This is just outside a shoulder width, right? Just outside a shoulder width. Uh, and on a 12 inch box for me, that's very, very deep. Now it's parallel if I go all the way to the edges of the rack, right? Because we cut, cut a lot of the range of motion out relative to uh, the knee angle and everything. And so it, it will be a lot higher. But this is good because it's letting me practice getting deeper. I'm getting really deep angles here because I need to make sure when I go back to back squatting that everything is super deep, right? I don't want there to be any question about my depths. I don't want there to be any question about my depth at all. And even if I don't quite get back to what I hit with that camber bar, even if I don't get back to 605, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm still going to have elite numbers after I finish this cut. And particularly once the cut is, is done. Once the cut is done and I'm down at that weight, uh, then people can say, well, you know, Jason, not elite numbers, so they're on the platform. Well, it's not like I'm not going to compete again. I'm just not going to tell you guys when I'm going to do it. I just don't want to be harassed by trolls and I don't want to get swatted again. So, uh, just not going to discuss it. So when I do compete, I'm just going to walk in and do it and you guys will find out after the fact. You'll find out a week later that I did, did a meet again. And then I'll see how many I want to do from there. It might become a regular thing for me again. I just have to see how it goes. but. When I get to that point, I don't want there to be any question about my depth, right? And I'm just going to get strong, brutally strong. It's like I'm going to have to close grip bench. I'm just going to bring my triceps up. Better with my shoulders anyways. Uh, I might stick with a, a squat that's not super wide. And, you know, people would say, is that as competitive? Well, if it's easier on my hips. And again, you got to remember, age classes matter here. They matter a lot. So many guys are so beat up by the time that age that they can't hit big numbers anyways. And those who use the stances and the grips and everything that allows them to continue to lift heavy, as we start getting up into our 40s, we're going to be the ones who are the strongest. So it doesn't matter if it's slightly weaker. It doesn't matter if it's not optimal leverages. If my hips feel good, I just build more muscle, right? That's the key anyways. Focus on body composition. I have the most muscle and I'm leanest and have maximized my strength and maximized my body composition. It won't really matter, will it? So what, I lose a small advantage from a stance change? I'm genetically a very good squatter. Again, that 605 cambered bar uh, should tell you guys that. You know, and people can argue about, oh, Jason's got bad genetics for this or that. People with bad genetics don't hit 605 squats in their 40s. And it's not like I was up there at 300 pounds or anything crazy. I was like 235, 230 to 235 when I did that 605. So, realistically here, I've got good quad genetics. Good squat genetics. So I'll maximize on that. And since I'm going to do this another thing I'm doing, I'm doing tons of extra quad work. We'll go ahead and just get bigger, thicker quads. Bigger glutes, bigger adductors, it's fine. 
and then maximize body composition, I'll come in and hit an elite squat. It's not going to be a problem. I just want to make sure it's the depth. It's another reason I'm hitting the quads really hard. Sometimes if our quads aren't quite strong enough, it'll cause us to short stroke depth. So again, deep box is well below parallel. Tons of quad work, single leg quad work. Which incidentally, all the, the quad work I'm technically doing hits glutes and adductors. And there's an important point there because those are the probably, arguably the most important muscles for a max squat. Quads are very much in the equation. We could make a strong argument for those, but all three of those are being hit with all those movements I do. Not just being hit on my speed squats. So again, maximize hypertrophy of those muscles. And then I'll come in and do extra work for them. I do a lot of glute work. You know, now some of this would be like, well, what about all the upper back? Well, a lot of that's handled by me doing the safety bar all the time. I think those RDLs will do really good. So I'm gonna have to cut good mornings out for a little while. They're getting to be too much for me, running into overuse problems. Cause I pushed them so hard now for a couple of years. Uh, I'm getting to where I'm pulling muscles in my mid back and stuff on rep work. It's okay. Replace them with RDLs for a little while. And they do all the upper back work I'm doing. I'm going to be doing a lot more rowing, a lot more snatch grip high pulls. All the, all the back will be fine for supporting the weight. It'll be fine. Build those primary movers. Speed pulls. Uh, since this was supposed to be a band wave and I did do raw last time off blocks, so I thought I better finish up with bands. Because I'm going to go to chains next wave. So I went relatively light so that I can get good speed. Uh, so again, just like with, with that, we're running a little, we're running less than 50% max on the band, on the bar weight with heavy tension. So again, I've only got 265 on the bar. Again, I wanted to get really, really good speed on these. And I just did six doubles. For people curious, they always ask me about rest times. My normal work sets, I take really long breaks. This stuff, I don't. Um, I would say the squats, I average 45 seconds between those. The speed pull is about 30 seconds. All my other stuff long take as long as you need your break should be as long as is required to replicate your performance for all three sets if you're doing three sets of 10 you better be able to do 10 reps with the weight that you started with that's how long a breaks you take and it should be hard on your first set but it still should be possible on the last all right and we know that. We know that's what the studies say. If you look at the studies that have looked at hypertrophy and rest times, what do we know? Breaks that are long enough to replicate your performance set to set produce the most muscle growth in the lab. Consistently. You know, we can do short breaks on speed work because they're not fatiguing. They're not limit sets. And then we can get a lot of work density in. It helps keep your heart rate up. It helps keep, keep you in shape. Of course, I do daily cardio anyways. Because again, I care about my health. Another reason I'm cutting, you guys know that. And I'll have other videos coming out that are already filmed discussing that coming up. Uh, a lot of that's for health purposes. You can only carry so much body weight. And if I can only carry so much body weight, then I'm gonna have to be lean and carry as much muscle as I can to be at that body weight. But for health purposes, that's what I'm gonna have to do. And yeah, that, that means people are like, well, you're going to have to get pretty lean. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to go down to like 10% body fat at some point in this. And I don't care about quote unquote aesthetics. It's a matter of health and competitiveness. It's just something I simply need to do. I went up on weight today on these Bulgarian split squats. I'm finding at least that I can get my balance this way, by the way. Notice I did not have a single balance issue. <laughs> on these sets today now some people can argue they don't like my my lockout there you know i don't care i don't have lockout strength issues on my quads and all of my other quad work locks just fine i'm just worried about feeling that stretch in my quad and working the muscle with the tension that i can part of it is if i go up too straight though i end up pushing forward too much so again I'm getting the deep stretch on the quad. That's what I care about. Because again, all my quad lockout stuff gets hit on so many other movements I do anyways, including even my other single leg exercise. Uh, but I, it almost felt like I was locking. I didn't think I was really short stroking it, but looking at it here a little bit at the top, 
but what I'm looking for is to get that similar knee angle to what I will get when I hit a parallel squat. It's what I'm trying to get to without losing my balance on the bench. That's the, that's the tricky part. So again, it's all about that knee angle. I need that knee angle deeper than 90 degrees. And, you know, again, we get that extra rectus femoris work on the other side due to stretching, and that is contracting, by the way, that is contributing slightly to the workload. Uh, but I went up five pounds on these, by the way, for those curious, I made a five pound jump because I'm like, mm, I felt like I had a rep in the tank last time. But after doing the speed squats and I put the five pounds on, these sets were hard. These sets were hard. Uh, my quads were lit up. They were lit from these, these three sets, all three of them. So we got some, some pretty good stimulus there. And we should because I this is the first time I've used this weight for this many reps. I've done this weight for sixes because I, I brought went up and actually was 10 pounds heavier than this for sixes and then I brought it down to do tens but even this at 156 this was hard for tens it was it was quite hard um, so I'm happy with that so again we're going to push the quads really hard I'm going to do at this point two is isolateral leg movements most of my lower body days. I may not be able to get six sets of them total. Like today, I didn't I didn't have it. I got two, but I did 13 sets of speed squats first. Then my glute bridges. And getting my footing is really so hard on these. I have to reset every time to get my feet in close enough. And it feels like everything slides, right? It feels like we slide and notice my body gets further away from my feet, so I have to readjust them. But we went up 10 pounds on this today. Again, three sets of 10. You guys are going to see a trend here. Like, and all your supplemental work is three sets of 10 right now. Yes, most of it is. And that's going to be the goal. And it gives me a good metric to work with. If I stay consistent on those, because again, three sets of 10 is fantastic for hypertrophy, especially if we do you know a couple different lifts for every muscle group. And it lets me consistently track my overload. So I can try to progress on the weight, progressive overload, with my three sets of 10. And if I stall, I can add change to almost every one of these lifts if I need to or something. I can do something like that. Right? We can do something like that. Make an adjustment. But, again, we want to try to just keep getting stronger at the 10 rep sets. So, again, with these 535 today. And, again, you guys, some of the people will say, well, you don't always lock all those. Yeah, because if my footing is wrong, I can't lock it. But if I get my feet back in, notice when I readjust... My range of motion goes up a couple inches. It's because I've got to get my feet right. And then I can get I can get it. Um, again, it's an awkward lift. When you start using a lot of weight, it just it slides you down. It will slide you down. So you've got to be aware of that. Okay, step ups. These were hard today. And I guess it's because my quads were just so fatigued. I did the speed squatting and then I did those that slight weight bump on the uh, split squats. My quads were not liking this at all. Especially when I got to I think the right leg each time I didn't think I was going to be able to get all 10 reps. Like the second set, um, I was basically having to rest pause it to get my, my last reps. Right? But the upside of this, look how deep of a, of a knee angle we get at the start. This is a deep knee angle. This is really going to give me that carryover that I want. Also, because of the high step up, we get a lot of adductor work. Get a lot of adductor and quad. Whereas in the other split squat, probably hits more of the rectus femoris, the upper quad. Probably gives you a little better glute than adductor. These are great for adductors. So again, hammering those quads. And I'm trying to get them from a deep position. That's the main thing, which, by the way, the glute bridge actually hits the quads in that deep stretch position, too. Some people don't factor that in. Just not as good as some of these other exercises because it's such a it's such an extreme partial. But it is a partial at the stretch position. So there could be some carryover to the bottom of your squat out of that. Hypothetically, I wouldn't rely on it a lot, but just making a note of it. But my quads were fried. Uh, my quads were totally fried. Just doing these five total sets of single leg exercises after the speed work, they were shot. You can see there, I'm struggling to finish that set. 
Um, then I decided to up the bands. I'm like, let's see if we can go to the next band up on these. And they weren't that hard. Like I, I felt like I had a rep in reserve going to the heavier band, the 25 pound band, instead of the 15. Again, this is a Rogue Blue and they're 50 pounds a set. So this is, you know, 25 pound band when it's stretched. Uh, I felt like they weren't as hard as they should have been as far as the work sets, but afterwards, after each set, that ache, especially in the lower hamstring, right? The lower third of it. Uh, I already know I may have hamstring dumps from this tomorrow, even though these sets were not to failure. The last set, I, the last rep was a little grindy, right? It was probably, it might have been one rep in reserve, maybe zero reps in reserve. I, I had a rep in the tank or two on the first couple sets. But again, that band just hits you differently. Uh, so I, I noticed, again, that hamstring fatigue already were, were getting sore immediately after each set. Like just that dull ache. So, again, I know those lower hamstring insertions got worked super hard. So that connective tissue might be sore in the morning. So I may have some DOMS. I'll, I'll deal with it. But again, we progressed on this. And I may not try to go up in bands again just for a bit. Right? I may not try to go up. Because again, now I'm going to have to start using double bands because the other ones, the thicker bands, they don't stretch the same on stuff like this. They're, all, they're really unusable. But I, I'll probably see if I can just work with this tension for just a bit. I might push the reps up a hair, see if I can get to 12. And if we can do that, I, I could maybe add another 10 pounds of band tension. Right? I'll have to go to two reds. Uh, you know, I'll play it by ear. I'll see what, see what we need to do. Then I finished off with my reverse hypers, and these were hard today. My low back was really fatigued. Like actually, I wanted to do RDLs today, but that part of my middle back that was pulled slightly on the good mornings on Monday was is still sore. It's still sore. And most of these movements didn't bother it, but I noticed I really felt it today on these, which was surprising to me because it doesn't feel like it was really a rector, but I guess it is. It's just above the rib. Right, it's above the base of the rib cage, so it's it's more of a thoracic erector near the base of the rib cage. I guess that area got slightly strained because I've noticed it doesn't hurt when I do pull-ups, didn't hurt when I do chin-ups. Overhead press didn't like it, but I felt it today on these, so it's like okay, it's, it's not really lat. It's in the area where the lat inserts, but again, it's just a mild pull in the uh, mid back in the erectors. But now I'll have time for it to recover. Everything will be good. Uh, so again, have to pull good mornings for a bit. I'm just, I'm, I'm basically running into overuse from using that safety squat bar all the time. I've been using it so much and pushing it so hard. Uh, and this is not the first time I've pulled that area of my back using it. So we'll just replace it with RDLs for a while and work on all these other movements and just get my legs jacked, right? All of this is intended to maximally develop my entire lower body. So we have the max work, we have the speed work, and then the assistance work is, should be enough to maximize hypertrophy. Even though I'm cutting, we still have to keep pushing that. But, uh, but yeah, on a side note, so these didn't feel good today. A lot of times my reverse hypers feel good. Today they really made my low back pump quite a bit. And I noticed that area feeling a little bit inflamed on doing them, and it didn't feel really comfortable. But again, it's stretching all of it, so that's good. And, uh, so again, happy with that. We're getting some active recovery to it. But a lot of that lets me know from what I've, I've noticed, it really is a uh, spinal erector in the mid back and not my lat. So I'm not really straining my lats doing it. It's, it's, it's erectors. All right, guys, but it was a good workout. Really happy with everything today. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.